All right, everybody, we have compiled a list of the best things we've ever done in Disney World, and we're ready for you to try them out, too. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Today's list is intense. We are talking the best of the best things in Disney World ever. So get ready to hear about delicious food, perfect rooms at certain hotels, special memories, and even experiences that might make you go, wait, that's in Disney World? Since when? But let's start with one that might split the room when it comes to popularity. Some of you may know it well, so let me know if you're one of those people. This is Disney's Keys to the Kingdom tour. Behind the scenes tours are a unique addition to Disney World's offerings, and we're gonna talk about a few of our all-time favorites in this list. First up is over at Magic Kingdom, Disney's Keys to the Kingdom tour, and this tour takes you around and under the Magic Kingdom for a better look into how the park operates, meaning you'll get to see those top secret utilidors the cast members use to quickly get around from land to land. Now this is a five hour walking tour. It will cost a pretty penny to experience, like about $114 per person on top of your theme park ticket, but if you're looking for a way to spice up your Magic Kingdom day and your history buff who wants to learn more about how Walt Disney himself pulled this whole operation off, then you might really enjoy this like we have. Now, yes, of course, if you want to get technical, Walt Disney didn't technically pull off the Magic Kingdom, Roy did, but we all know it was Walt's vision, right? Right. Okay. And don't worry, lunch is served during this tour, just don't expect any of Cinderella's Royal Table fine dining or anything. Next on our list, having a late dinner at the park. Now wait, there's something really special about this one. Sometimes it's tough to decide whether or not you want to eat a nice meal at a Disney park since they do take quite a bit of time out of your day. But what some of the DFB team members enjoy doing is booking their dining reservations for the very last time slot of the night. Why? Well, A, you don't have to stop everything you're doing mid park day to sit down and eat. And B, when your meal is finished, you and your group will be some of the last people in the park, meaning you'll be able to walk through an empty park and just experience it without anyone else around. Everything will be closed or closing, but there's something cozy about being one of the final guests of the day. You don't really get to experience that all that often. Plus, you can get some really nice last minute pictures. Now let's talk about our hotel really quickly. Our next best thing we've ever done in Disney World is staying in a Savannah View room in Animal Kingdom Lodge. So many of my best Disney World memories are wrapped up in my stays at AKL. It's unique. There are full on savannas with dozens of animals right in your backyard. And stays in the Kidani Village, those with Savannah View suites or villas are breathtakingly gorgeous. You wake up, you pull back your curtain and bam, giraffes. Every morning should start off that way. Really the Savannah View are incredible, well worth the extra money. Now, we've got another hotel experience for you. This one is much more budget friendly. It's watching the fireworks at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. So picture this, the sun has set, you just grabbed a Dole Whip from the Pineapple and I counter service, you find a lounge chair on the Polynesian Village beachside, and while you're eating your frozen pineapple concoction, the Magic Kingdom fireworks show begins. Even though you're not standing in front of Cinderella Castle to see those projections, the music is still piped in around the area, and you can clearly see the fireworks light up the night sky from your view across Seven Seas Lagoon. And if that doesn't sound wonderful and lots less crowded, then I don't know what does. Now, if you ever have a day during your trip when you're not going to one of the Disney parks, then here's what you can do instead. Number five on our list is have a resort day. A resort day can go many different ways. If you're staying at a Disney hotel that you wanna fully explore, then take advantage of those amenities for sure. You're paying for them after all. Spend some time by the pool, catch a movie on those big inflatable screens, enjoy some marshmallows by a campfire, and check out the restaurants and lounges at your hotel. But you don't have to be limited to just the hotel you paid to stay in. You can hit up the monorail resorts and spend the day riding from Polynesian Village to Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and over to Disney's Contemporary Resort. Not only are there restaurants and shops and sweeping views, but if you go during the afternoon, you might also stumble upon some to-go crafting kits you can make during your visit, like button art or necklaces. And the Skyliner route is also a fun one to jump on and ride to and from different Disney hotels, like Disney's Art of Animation, Riviera Resort, Caribbean Beach, and all those surrounding Epcot area resorts. If you ever wanted to explore and not have to pay for a park ticket, this is the way to do it. 
Okay, and if you happen to be having a resort day, maybe you also want to schedule a coincidental sleep-in day. Disney trips are often go, 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 and you need to plan some downtime so you don't burn out and your family doesn't burn out. If a full day relaxing at the resort may be too much relaxing, then plan a day to sleep in. Getting in the park right when it opens or taking advantage of the 30-minute early entry perk for Disney hotel guests can mean you experience shorter lines, but shorter lines won't matter if your whole group is too tired to enjoy the ride at the end of that line. Skip the early morning on at least one day of your trip. Plan to enjoy a late breakfast or brunch. Keep some breakfast items in the room for a truly lazy day. Next on my list, this is my list, is using shipped or Instacart instead of packing everything. You know I talk about this all the time. You get stuff shipped to your house, so why not get stuff shipped to your Disney hotel? You can have the things literally shipped, but you need to pay a per box fee of about $6 for the front desk to hold it for you. So what I always do is use the grocery delivery services like shipped or Instacart to schedule a delivery time where I can either meet the delivery person right there in the lobby of the hotel to get your stuff, or they can also drop it off at the front desk and then you can get it at your convenience. You can skip packing snacks for the kids, sunscreen, or any other kind of bulky items you might rather leave out of your suitcase, like all those diapers and all that formula. Just order them once you arrive in Orlando. Now, there are so many different Disney World restaurants that are in hotels. We've talked about some of our all-time favorites in past videos, and I would highly suggest eating at Sanaa. And although I do love the food at Sanaa, I want to focus on the experience of it. If you make a reservation at Sanaa that takes place before the sun sets, and you're seated near one of those floor-to-ceiling windows around the dining room, then you'll have front row seats to the Animal Kingdom Lodge's Savannah, meaning you can dine on an incredible meal right next to all the African wildlife that are coming over to check you out. But remember, make sure to book that reservation before it gets dark because if you're there in the dark all you're gonna see is your reflection in the window and no animals so it's always best to eat at Sanaa a little bit earlier the next best thing we've ever done in Disney World is receive a wake-up call. Okay, granted, the really loud and shrill ring of your resort's phone at 7 a.m. is not the best thing ever. But if you set a wake-up call for that time via the hotel room phone, whoever answers the call will get to start off their day with a greeting from Mickey Mouse. Yep, that could be a whole lot of fun for kiddos. And if you're a morning person, you might enjoy it too. Now, have you ever worn a celebration button in Disney World? Whether you're in Disney World for a birthday, an anniversary, a honeymoon, or whatever celebration has brought you to the most magical place on Earth, ask for a celebration button. You can get one for free at the lobby of your hotel or at guest relations in the parks. Not only are they cute and oh so fashionable, but some of the restaurants you'll dine at on Disney property might also give you a little extra treat to make your celebration that much sweeter. And cast members throughout the day will tell you happy birthday, happy anniversary, or happy whatever you're celebrating. It's a really, really fun way to feel extra special. Now this next one, it happens all the time, but you never know when. These are Disney World's magical moments. Magical moments are a way for Disney cast members to go out of their way to make you feel extra special for just one shining moment. And they're gonna be a different experience for everyone. For example, the last time we went to Epcot, my son decided to wear his Test Track shirt when he's super proud of. So of course we had to ride Test Track. But when we got off the ride, the cast member at the exit complimented my son's shirt and then told him he should probably go ahead and just ride again because he he really likes Test Track. And just like that, we were taken right to the front of the line without having to wait in that main queue line all over again. Now we were both ecstatic and it was a huge surprise and something we will never forget. Now keep in mind, magical moments are completely organic. You can't force a cast member to give one to you and you can't really ask for one. But when they happen, they make you feel really special, like 15 minutes of fame special. Okay, next on our list is over in Magic Kingdom. Something that a few of our DFB team members have done and they've absolutely loved is a Magic Kingdom dessert party. So Magic Kingdom has three different dessert parties, Disney Enchantment pre-party, Disney Enchantment after party, and Disney Enchantment treats and seats. The difference between these three parties depends on when you wanna eat an array of desserts and sip on unlimited beverages, before, during, or after the fireworks. You'll also have different viewing areas for the show. Pre-party and after party guests will be led to a reserved section of the plaza garden, while Treats and Seats guests will be able to sit, hence the name, over on the Tomorrowland Terrace patio. The pre and after party is going to cost around 99 bucks per adult, while Treats and Seats cost around $114 per adult. Yep, that's on top of your park ticket, because the privilege of sitting down is really valuable in Disney's eyes. So I'm not saying this is the best option for every trip you take. It is pricey. It is going to cost a chunk of change if you have a large family. But if you're celebrating something big during your Disney vacation, this could be a memorable extra to tack on to the festivities, especially especially if you want a crystal clear view of the show. 
Okay, next on our best things we've ever done in Disney World list is a birthday fireworks cruise. Sure, going to Disney World is already a special occasion celebration, but if you want to make a birthday even more special, consider booking one of Disney's fireworks cruises. The Fairy Tale Fireworks Cruise is a dessert cruise that takes you out on the water in front of Magic Kingdom, but you'll be with a whole boat full of strangers and maybe you want something a little more exclusive. Well, Disney offers private fireworks cruises both at Magic Kingdom and in Epcot. Up to 10 guests can hop on a 25-foot boat for a unique view of the nighttime show along with some snacks and sodas, and you can pay a little bit extra to get it all birthday themed. Prices start at $3.99 plus tax, but you can always add on more food or those birthday decorations to plus it up. Now, if you're looking for a really exclusive experience for up to 10 of your closest Disney friends, it's time to book a VIP tour. Let's get this out of the way right at the beginning. These tours are wildly expensive. $425 to $850 per hour with a seven hour minimum. Now you are splitting it with the whole group potentially, but it still doesn't include park tickets. So you gotta add that on top. So what do you get for the price? Well, a way to skip the lines without using Disney Genie Plus, behind the scenes looks at some hidden spaces around the parks, snacks, a private van to shuttle you between the parks if you're hopping of course. Basically VIP tours guarantee you will have the perfect line free day in Disney World. Well they don't say guarantee but you can really have a pretty great line free day in Disney World if you get one. So if you're on a short trip or you've got friends with deep pockets these tours can be a complete game changer. All right, time to talk rhinos next. There are actually four different tours you can experience at Animal Kingdom. You've got Caring for Giants with the Disney Elephants, Savor the Savannah, a food-centric tour, and the Wild Africa Trek with a VIP tour through the Animal Kingdom savannas with like a special dining adventure included. But one of our writers pointed out she absolutely loved the Up Close with Rhinos tour, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. (laughs) This behind the scenes tour is a 60 minute guided adventure with an experienced rhino expert tour guide who will not only give you the chance to become besties with these creatures but will also give you plenty of information about what goes into their daily care on the savannah. Up Close with Rhinos actually is one of the cheaper tours on property. It's only about $45 per person which does not include your Animal Kingdom Park ticket by the way. Now, since we already touched on the subject of celebrations, we are going to add to the fun with this one. Did you know that you can set up extra flowers, treats, balloons, and decorative add-ons in your room for your fiance or the birthday kid who's turning double digits or the big graduate of the group? Just head to the Disney Floral and Gifts website. From there, you'll be able to order from a list, from a set list of celebratory gift baskets and goodies that will greet you when you open your hotel room for the first time. You can even order an entire Christmas tree to be in there. Just plan to budget for this, though. I've seen some pretty pricey options on that website before, and if you decide to really go all out, you will need the money to do so. Now, when you're trying to have the best Disney day ever, sometimes you've got to take Robert Frost's advice and go down the road less traveled. So let's take a good look at some of the less popular roads that have led to some of our best decisions. This may be a controversial best thing we've ever done, but get in line for the less popular rides first. Now, you may want to get in line immediately for the rides that you know will have forever long wait times later on in the day, and that's okay. But if you hit up the less popular rides during your early theme park entry benefit that allows Disney World Resort guests to enter the parks 30 minutes before they officially open for the day, then you'll be able to get on multiple rides within that 30 minute time frame. One example, one of our DFB riders went to Magic Kingdom not too long ago during early theme park entry, and instead of getting in line for for Seven Dwarfs Mine Train or Space Mountain, she hit up Adventureland. During that half hour before the park opened, they were able to ride Pirates of the Caribbean and Jungle Cruise with no more than five minute waits for each. And neither of those are really B tier rides. Those are rides that also get pretty popular during the day. So knocking out both in a 30 minute time frame is super impressive and maybe the strategy you wanna try next time. Now, speaking of unpopular opinions, here's another unconventional idea coming your way. Now, our DFB team is pretty split on this one, but I'm interested to see what you'd have to say about it. When Disney has a big, and I mean huge, event going on, the parks are usually wildly crowded. And for some, that can be miserable. But for others who tend to feed off the energy, excitement, and chaos that these celebrations bring, then these can turn into some of the best and most memorable park days ever. Take Disney's 50th anniversary celebration that kicked off on October 1st last year, or the party-like atmosphere that happens over at Epcot every New Year's Eve. For some, there's something about being there in the moment with a bunch of folks who are just as excited to be celebrating in Disney for a massive occasion as you are. But uh, for the record, this is definitely not one of the best things I've ever done. This was definitely a suggestion by other people on my team because uh, thanks, but I'd much rather be back with my Dole Whip over at the Polynesian Village beachside if given the choice. It's fun, it's exciting, but for an introvert like me, it's also very stressful. But what the hey, what's one more divisive tip between friends, right? 
Next, we're gonna talk about fireworks. Now, I'm not kidding. These are all things that our team has said are the best things they've ever done in Disney World. And obviously, there's reasons why. If your family tends to prioritize rides over shows, then you may wanna take advantage of Disney Enchantment and Magic Kingdom or Harmonious and Epcot by missing them entirely. Guests tend to wanna to see these shows, so they'll congregate outside of the ride lines in order to ooh and ah over the spectacle. But this gives you the chance to hit up the rides you weren't able to get on during the peak of the day, since queues will be, will be way less packed than they were before. Not to mention some of your best outdoor ride-throughs of rides totally happen at night. And that's a genuine factoid right there. Don't believe me? You might after this next point. What if I told you you could have your cake and eat it too, Magic Kingdom Edition? And that's riding an outdoor coaster during the fireworks. Outdoor rides like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad are so cool to ride during the fireworks because you can see the show from a whole new vantage point, but not for the whole thing, just a shimmering, shining snippet. However, if this is your first time visiting the Magic Kingdom, maybe don't try this because queue lines are so unpredictable, so it's hard to time a ride through like this just right. There's nothing like coming up to the top of that hill in Splash Mountain right when the fireworks go off above Cinderella Castle. But how often does it happen? Like once, once a night. It has to be you. <laughs> All right, next on our list is going on a solo trip. I just talked about this in a recent video. And the great thing about going on a solo trip to Disney World is that this is your moment. What do you want to do in Disney World the most? Solo trips give you the freedom to decide everything, literally every single thing. You can spend all day in your deluxe resort, chilling in bed, watching movies. You can ride your favorite rides and your favorite rides only as many times as you want. You can sit and read a book at the pool and drink a cocktail. You can people watch all day long. Trust me. You'll You'll have lots of stories after. The power is in your hands and there's something super wonderful about that feeling. Next on my list of best things I've ever done at Disney World is take my parents to Disney World. Everyone's always debating whether or not you should bring your very young kids to Disney World, but how about we thank the ones who made that decision about us with a vacation? They appreciate it so much. It's a fun switch to sort of pay them back for taking you when you were a kid. Spend time looking at pictures from back then and then do some of the same things you did when you were a kid or just let mom and dad decide what they wanna do. If they wanna spend the whole day relaxing at the pool, great, do that. If they wanna go visit their favorite restaurant that they went to on their honeymoon in Epcot or whatever, awesome. It's a great opportunity to just relive the experience, but turn the tables a little bit and thank mom and dad for what they did, which is basically make you a lifelong Disney fan. And now that's where all your money goes. All right, speaking of where all your money goes, we're gonna talk next about dining at those bucket list restaurants. So a meal can make your Disney vacation. I didn't start Disney Food Blog because the food meant nothing. There are a few restaurants that are so quintessentially Disney or just so truly exceptional that they can take your experience to a whole new level. For the Disney Files, Be Our Guest Restaurant and Cinderella's Royal Table and Magic Kingdom are the big ones if you wanna feel like you're stepping into an animated fairy tale. For those who love new and interesting and intergalactic, you might wanna look into snagging a reservation at Space 220 and Epic Epcot that simulates dining in space. And for the big time foodies, there's nothing that's gonna top Victoria and Albert's. Just be prepared for the $300 plus price tag on this seven to nine course meal. Now, every day when Casey's Corner opens in Magic Kingdom, you have the opportunity to do something very few guests even know about. At opening time, cast members will pick a guest to throw out the first pitch, literally at this baseball themed quick service restaurant. Best part, you typically get a free brownie for your service as well. And those brownies are some of my favorites. Now, heads up, they usually pick a kid. So I don't know, maybe get Junior up there right in front to share that brownie. Now, have you ever wished you could go back in time and re-experience something for the first time all over again at Disney World? Because some of our best memories come from those moments and you just wish you could bottle them up. And in this case, we're talking about Rise of the Resistance. When you ride this ride, the entire experience with no tech concerns and no closures, it is incredible. Riding Rise of the Resistance for the first time is wicked cool. From the queue line where you get to see all those stormtroopers lined up after you're captured by the First Order, to all the complex animatronics that look really real, to the dark ride, trackless ride, thrill ride system. It was like watching a magic trick unfold. How did they pull off that Imagineering? Now I won't give everything away, but just in case you haven't ridden Rise of the Resistance yet, let me just say, no ride through of this ride has quite matched that first ever experience where everything was new and shiny and exciting and working. 
Headed back over to Epcot, this is one of the best things you can do in Epcot, as far as I'm concerned, which you may disagree. But on October 2nd, Epcot's Behind the Seeds Tour is coming back, and we are pumped! Behind the Seeds takes you on a walking tour around living with the land greenhouses, so you get to learn things like how these plants are able to thrive and grow in each of their different little setups. I don't know, I'm just a big fan of living with the land, so the fact that I can spend more time there than just the average boat ride tour that floats on through is really nice. Like, it inspires me to go home and grow my own garden. Have I done this? No, I would be horrible at it, but it's inspiring nonetheless. Now this tour is only $35 per person, so like 10 bucks cheaper than the rhinos. And that's not too shabby considering you could get two people in this tour for the price of one spirit jersey. And imagine the memories. Next on our list of best things we've ever done in Disney World is eat at a rooftop restaurant. Luckily, you've got some choices. California Grill at Contemporary Resort, Topolino's Terrace at Riviera, Toledo Tapa Steak and Seafood at Grand Destino Tower. They are on the top floor of their hotels with gorgeous views of the property and crystal clear vantage points of the theme park fireworks. If you book one of these restaurants at night, you'll be able to use their outdoor terrace or private balcony to watch the Disney nighttime spectacular from a bird's eye view while enjoying a top tier view. Meal. Now, if you want something a little less expensive, don't forget that these places also have lounges. And if you can win the first come first serve lottery, you might be able to dine in one. Okay, we're gonna fly all the way over to Animal Kingdom for this next best thing we've ever done in Disney World, and that is wait to ride Flight of Passage. Now, hang on, because this is not what you think it is. Flight of Passage is the most popular ride in Animal Kingdom, and for good reason. But because of its popularity, the lines for this one are massively long pretty much all day. So here's what you can do. You can experience the rest of Disney's Animal Kingdom, taking your time, walking the trails, riding the other rides, having lots of mac and cheese with pulled pork on top, watching the shows, etc. But in the last 30 minutes of your park day, that's when you jump in line for Flight of Passage, because even if the wait time still says it's gonna be over an hour, you're not gonna get kicked out of the queue once you're in it, meaning you can ride Flight of Passage and still be in Animal Kingdom after it's closed up shop for the day. And walking through a glowing Pandora at night, truly stunning. So here I am about to give you another disclaimer. You see, Disney World technology Technology isn't always the most reliable, so I can't 100% guarantee that the ride won't have to shut down early for technical difficulty. So it can kind of be a gamble to put off riding Flight of Passage till the last minute, but if it's a risk you're willing to take, it could very well pay off big time. All right, next best thing our team has done in Disney World is explore the World Showcase exhibits. Many of the World Showcase pavilions have tucked away exhibits that explore different parts of their respective cultures. Not only are these exhibits jam-packed with facts and interesting visual displays, but they also don't draw too big of crowds, and some people don't even know they're there. So if you need some peace and quiet, definitely go to one of these locations. Some of the quietest exhibits that stay consistently still are the Inside Shanghai Disneyland Resort Gallery in the China Pavilion, and the the Race Against the Sun Gallery in the Morocco Pavilion. But let's face it, your best relaxing moments probably aren't gonna happen inside the park, but they could happen in your hotel. You can book a spa day. There are two Disney World Resort owned spas. One is at Grand Floridian Resort and Spa and the other is hidden away at Disney's Saratoga Springs, which is known as the Senses Spa. Both places offer a list of spa packages, including massages and body therapies and facials and mani patties. So if you need an afternoon of being pampered, unless your partner agrees to give you a back massage for free, these spas can get you feeling very, very, very relaxed. Okay, now this next one isn't for everyone, but some of you watching might get a huge benefit out of this next best thing we've ever done in Disney World, and that is get engaged. Disney World is a hotspot for proposals, and there are several ways to pull it off with that magical Disney charm. If you were able to snag a reservation for Cinderella's Royal Table before your trip, you can add on the glass slipper engagement package to your meal. Yep, there's a literal engagement package at Disney World. That way, when the moment is just right and you two lovebirds are busy gazing deep into each other's eyes, relishing a meal inside the actual Cinderella castle, a glass slipper will arrive at your table. After the will you marry me spiel, followed by a hopeful of course I will from your partner, the two of you will get to celebrate with signature desserts and a special toast to mark the best day ever. Well, best day so far. Now to add this package to your Cinderella's Royal Table reservation, call 407-824-4477 or email wdw.crt.special.events at disney.com. But here's the thing, you don't have to go 
go this route to pull off that big Disney proposal of your dreams. There are so many picturesque locations around the parks that you can use instead that'll cost way less in the long run. And if you pick a park destination with a photo pass photographer nearby, like close to the Italy Isola Bridge in Epcot's Italy Pavilion, or the Floating Mountain in Disney's Animal Kingdom, or even the outside of Cinderella Castle, which is a pretty popular one, just let the photographers know what's up. That way they can help you capture the moment you get down on one knee, candid reactions and all. And this next one is truly incredible, and I hope a lot of you get the opportunity to do this. And I think with my reaction to the Behind the Seeds tour, you have a little bit of an idea of the direction this one's gonna go. We are talking about Walt's train collection. Okay, the next time you find yourself inside the Boulder Ridge Villas at Disney's Wilderness Lodge, if it's not too far out of your way, of course, then you might wanna check out the Carrollwood Pacific Railroad Room. This room holds a lot of train-themed memorabilia, including a couple model trains from Walt Disney's personal collection. I love this cozy little room. It holds important pieces of Walt's favorite hobby, but it also gives you a nice place to just take it easy for a bit. It's so chill in there. There are games to play. There's a big fireplace and big comfy chairs. And hey, you got Walt's train from his backyard. That's wild. Then again, Disney's Wilderness Lodge really is all about taking it easy, which is super prominent over at their most underrated restaurant. You can eat by the water at Geyser Point. This is another best thing we've ever done in Disney World. The restaurants at Wilderness Lodge have a whole lot of personality. Whispering Canyon Cafe has those zany waiters that'll give you way more ketchup than you could ever want or need during your meal. That's a lie. You can never have enough ketchup. And Storybook Dining at Artist Point with Snow White has a massively long name, but also takes place in an enchanted forest, so we'll let the name thing slide. But Geyser Point Bar and Grill should not be overlooked either. Not only does it give you the option to enjoy your meal in a quick or table service format, but it's also right next to the lake. So if you decide to eat or grab a drink here, toward the end of the night, you'll be able to watch the electrical water pageant float by while you dine. Plus, the sunsets are gorgeous here. So taking it easy doesn't have to be difficult in Disney World if you know where to go. And speaking of, we've got another one for ya. Let's talk about a stroll along the boardwalk at night. Disney's Boardwalk Inn Resort is a completely different place at night. By day, you've got a sunshiny atmosphere where not a whole lot's going on, but hey, at least it's peaceful. And by night, the boardwalk becomes a choose-your-own adventure. You can keep strolling down that peaceful path, taking in all the hanging lights and admiring those lakeside views. Or you can say, enough is the, enough of the quiet stuff. Let's pump up the party and hit up the nearby nighttime offerings like Jelly Rolls or Atlantic Dance Hall, because everybody knows Atlantic Dance Hall is hopping all the time. It's not really. But you've also got those nighttime offerings, Abracadabra, and of course, signature restaurant Flying Fish. Basically, the boardwalk is a great, relatively inexpensive place to go to have a fun evening in Disney World. All right, can't forget about the holiday season now, can we? The team and I have got some wonderful memories from our times in the parks during Halloween and Christmas, too. So next on our list is experiencing a ride overlay. Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party and Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party take place in the Magic Kingdom after the park closes, meaning limited crowds and a lot of exclusive events. But one of the things we look forward to seeing with these holiday parties is how they transform classic rides with holiday overlays. We've seen live actors in Pirates of the Caribbean, Pitch Blackness in Space Mountain, even more than usual, if you can believe it, and trippy colors and music in Mad Tea Party for the Halloween shenanigans. For Christmas, we also wait every year for the Jungle Cruise to turn into the Jingle Cruise, which is so much fun. But you don't have to go to an after hours party to see a Christmas holiday overlay. Epcot also likes to add Christmas essences throughout their Living with the Land boat ride too, and we all know how much we love living with the land, right? Right. Okay, and bonus, the brand new Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind Coaster is getting a holiday overlay this year as well, meaning we'll be able to launch backwards into space to Christmas tunes. Now, if you're not in the Christmas spirit yet, it is time to ramp up the good tidings and cheer. Next on our list is watching the Candlelight Processional. There are some Disney World shows that leave you with goosebumps even after that final line has been recited, that final tune has been sung, and that final note has been played. And one of those types of shows is the Candlelight Processional, which happens during Epcot's Festival of the Holidays over at the American Adventure Pavilion. The Candlelight Processional tells the story of Christmas and features a celebrity narrator, a huge orchestra, and a full choir, and it's truly an incredible spectacle that's coming back for the 2022 season. So if you're planning on being in Epcot during the holidays this year, you'll need to check the show schedules ahead of time to make sure you don't miss out on this performance. 
Next on our list, heading back over to Magic Kingdom, is watching the Magic Kingdom fireworks from someplace new. We've watched the fireworks from everywhere so far in this list. We've watched them from rooftop restaurants, resort beach sides, outdoor roller coasters. What other new places could we see them from? Well, if you want a less crowded view of the Magic Kingdom fireworks, and you don't mind missing out on the projection show that stretches from Cinderella Castle all the way down Main Street, USA, then you can catch the show behind the castle in Fantasyland. We've seen the fireworks while standing near Prince Charming's regal carousel and close to the beach our guest restaurant, and even between the lanterns hanging above the tangled restroom. So surely you'll find a place you enjoy. Okay, another best thing we've ever done is go ahead and book the park hopper. I know this is another divided opinion one, but like I said, these are the best things our team has ever done and someone really, really enjoyed booking the park hopper. At $65 to $85 per person, you could be on the fence about this ticket upgrade that lets you visit multiple parks in one day. But if you value flexibility, this might be the best purchase you make at Disney World. It just gives you more freedom and even if you don't use it all the time, knowing that you can can make things much less stressful. Let's say you plan to spend most of your day in Magic Kingdom, but lunchtime rolls around and all the lines are long and your group is just not there for it. You happen to look in the My Disney Experience app and wait times are super short in Animal Kingdom, so you just go where the people aren't because you got that park hopper ticket. And speaking of going to Animal Kingdom, let's talk about one of our team members' best thing they've ever done in Animal Kingdom, and that's ride Kilimanjaro Safaris in the rain. I'm not talking about riding Kilimanjaro Safaris at Disney's Animal Kingdom through a torrential downpour. I'm talking about when there's a light rain or drizzle going on, because with that rain comes cooler temperatures, and the animals on the savanna love it. During those scorching Orlando afternoons, the surrounding wildlife is usually like, forget this, and they hide away in the nearest shaded area to take a nap. Same animal. Same. But when light showers enter the area, the animals will usually perk back up, and that leads to more active encounters during your ride through. You might even have the chance to see the elephants splash around in the puddle. Now, since we're at Animal Kingdom now, I'm gonna stick around for the next point because literally Animal Kingdom is filled with so many bests and this is probably my best best in Animal Kingdom and that's chilling at Nomad Lounge. I am a big believer in the idea that Animal Kingdom is actually a really good rainy day park. Here's another example. If you get on the walk-up wait list for Nomad Lounge and you're seated outside next to the patio railing, then you'll have yourself a nice little view of the surrounding trees and gentle river flowing down below. But what makes that view even better is when there's a soft rain fall and you can watch the storm trickle off the overhead awning. It's like the ultimate ASMR. However, if it's not raining, then you'll have a better chance of seeing one of the character flotillas sail across the river. Few things are better than getting the chance to wave at Pocahontas while you're sipping on a glow cube cocktail and eating the best lobster mac and cheese of your life. Just saying. Okay, next on our list, festivals, eating around them specifically. Epcot's festivals offer extra entertainment, activities, and loads of unique foods only available during that event. With four festivals throughout the year and ever-expanding run dates, there's almost always something going on in Epcot. You got Festival of the Arts, Farts, in January and February, Flower and Garden in March through June, Food and Wine from July all the way into November, and Festival of the Holidays rounds out the year. There are anywhere from 15 to 37 food booths to try out, so you'll want to plan ahead. We've got guidebooks to help with that. Our festival guides offer in-depth planning tips, full menus, color photos, and reviews to help you plan your days. And now you can rep your DFB support with our awesome food and wine vibes tees as well. Find the books at dfbstore.com, use code YouTube for a discount, and find the shirts over at merch.dfbstore.com. Okay, so we all need somewhere to rest our head after a long day riding rides and eating those festival snacks, but splurging on our room may be the best thing we've ever done. If you're a park commando and only use that room for sleeping, keep moving. But if you love relaxing in your hotel room on vacation and want to make sure you get the best of the best rooms, you can stay tuned. Staying on Disney World property is already an upgrade, especially in terms of price compared to other nearby hotels or vacation rentals. But even Disney hotel rooms run the gamut from basic to bougie. Love extra perks like more time in the parks and exclusive access to snacks and drinks throughout the day. You could book a club level room at a deluxe resort to get extended evening hours in the parks and access to a club level lounge that offers up small bites and continental breakfast along with wine, beer, and cordials in the evening. And about that view from your room, well, Disney has several hotels that offer theme park view rooms. Book one at the Contemporary, Polynesian, or Grand Floridian, and you'll have picture perfect views of the Magic Kingdom fireworks from your private balcony. But make sure you're booking a theme park view room specifically. Need to stretch out? Opt for larger rooms like the one, two, or three bedroom villas available at all of Disney's vacation club resorts. You don't need to be a DVC member to book them. You can either book these rooms directly through Disney or rent them via a DVC rental site like David's DVC Rental. If you're going with a large group and planning to stay at one of these resorts already, opting for renting DVC points for a two bedroom
three-bedroom suite that includes a full kitchen and living room may come out pretty close to the same price as two standard hotel rooms. Definitely crunch those numbers. All right, next on my list, and again, this is we're back to my list of the best things I've ever done in Disney World, is getting the Twilight Feast. If you've chosen to stay at the Polynesian Village Resort and room service dining has returned, which it hasn't yet, by the way, you may find yourself eligible for one of the best meals available at Disney World, and you don't even need to get out of your pajamas to eat it. While it is still currently unavailable because Disney's not brought room service dining back, the Polynesian is home to the Twilight Feast, which is a room service exclusive meal. This is basically everything you'll get at Ohana, pork dumplings, those amazing noodles, teriyaki chicken, steak, shrimp, and of course that bread pudding. It's not all you can eat like at Ohana, but it's also about $30 cheaper than Ohana. And a single serving is definitely splittable between multiple people, making it even less expensive than a sit down meal at the restaurant itself. Here's hoping this one comes back. Another best thing we've ever done in Disney World is have a Disney Springs day. We love the parks. We really do, but we also love Disney Springs and it's completely free to visit. So I'm going to cheat a little on this point and give you five of the best things you can do while you're running around Disney Springs for the day. Ready? Number one, grab a dessert. Where? Exactly. Up to you. You've got Gideon's Bakehouse for massive cookies, Amaret's Patisserie for decorative petite cakes, Salt and Straw for wacky yet wonderful ice cream flavors. It all depends on what you're in the mood for. Number two, check out the largest Disney store on property. World of Disney and stand under the spitting stitch because it's basically a rite of passage. Number three, dine at some of the best restaurants around. Some of my personal favorites are Chef Art Smith's Homecoming, Haleo when they have a really, really good paella, but not the squidding paella. I don't like that one. And of course, I'm a sucker for some on-the-go tenders from Chicken Guy. We love Raglan Road. There's just so much to love about Disney Springs restaurants. And number four, you can drive on the water. Yeah, that's right. Drive on the water. Right outside the Boathouse restaurant, you can rent an Amphicar to take out on the water driver included of course i'm not gonna let you drive a car on the water and bonus tip if you plan on eating at the boathouse do that before your amphicar ride because your restaurant receipt is going to give you a discount off your next ride number five is create your own treat over at goofy's candy co you can customize a candy apple rice crispy treat marshmallow or cookie with your choice of chocolate dip toppings and chocolate drizzle one of the best things about Disney World is that there is so much to do that you cannot do anywhere else and so much that you would not expect to be able to do at Disney World. Yeah, you can hug a character or eat something you've never had before, but you can also learn to surf at Typhoon Lagoon or explore a savanna on a private tour in Animal Kingdom. You can drink around the entire world in one day. Well, World Showcase is 11 countries, but that's enough, isn't it? You can watch an Alpenhorn concert inside Epcot's Beer Garden restaurant. You can eat snails. You can get a sundae as big as your face. The options are truly endless and no matter what you like whether you're a foodie a ride enthusiast a history buff a golf aficionado you will find something you'll love at disney world and it's going to be something unique what's the best thing you've ever done in disney world did it make our list follow along with us on tiktok instagram facebook and of course right here on the channel as we continue to find the new best things in disney world and let us know your top experiences in the comments thanks for listening everyone and thanks for watching as always this is aj for disney food blog and and we'll see you real soon.